All right, welcome back to another episode of Mad English TV. Today we're going to take a look at um, a question that actually one of my subscribers sent me, I don't know, I think it was a couple months ago already. Sorry for the delay. Anybody who's asked me questions, you know, I put it on a list and I've got this huge list of, of like video topics. You know, sometimes I get around to it sooner than later. So if you've asked me a question, you know, to... Um, you know, to make a video about something, I have it on a list, um, and I'll get to it eventually, I hope. It's a huge list. It's probably like like a hundred or a couple hundred video ideas. <laughs> so so bear with me, guys. Thank you for your patience. But someone named Steve asked me this question from Ukraine. So thank you, Steve, from Ukraine. I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you guys are all doing well. This is a great question. He said, hey, Mark, can you make a video about words that sound like they have opposite an opposite meaning right they should they should be opposite in their meaning but actually uh the meaning is the same so the words have the same meaning but they sound like they should be opposite can you think of any words like that i mean if we if we flip this around then there would be lots of examples right so imagine if there are words that sound the same but have different meanings. Then there are lots. I mean, English is full of those kinds of words, right? For example, um, so, so, and so, right? I mean, these words all sound the same, but they have different meanings, right? Do you know the difference between these words meaning? So, you know, I could say, I'm making this video so you can learn English. You're welcome, <laughs> right? I'm making this video so, so that you can learn English. Now, this one, S-O-W, that means to plant seeds in the ground. All right, so if you want to plant a garden, you know, you have to get some seeds and you have to sow your seeds. You have to put the seeds in the ground. You have to plant them, right? That's called sowing, sowing the seed. Okay, now this one, sow, S-E-W, kind of, it looks like it should be sue. All right, sue, but it's not. It's sow. Right, so if you sew, that means you um, you stitch together fabric for like like making clothing, for example. Right, you sew clothes. Right, so all of these are the same sound but different meanings. But this is not what this video is about. Okay, this video is about the opposite. Right, this video is about words that sound opposite but actually have the same meaning. So have you thought about any? Let, let me know down in the comments if you've thought of, of any examples. I'll give you one here, okay? Flammable and inflammable. Flammable and inflammable. They look like they should be opposites, right? I mean, look at this. <laughs> flammable, inflammable. This is the positive one. This is the negative one, right? I mean, very often this is how English words work, right? With a little prefix here at the beginning. A prefix is just a part of a word, right? There are lots of, of, um, of, of prefixes in English words, right? This is a very common prefix, in. Um, can you think of any? Um, or un, or d, right? Um, don't unfriend me, right? There's, a, there's an example, right? If, you're, if you friend someone, <laughs> then, then you're friends, but if you want to like delete them as your friend, then you unfriend them, right? So that's a, an example of a, of a prefix, right? So what does this mean? Well, these mean the same thing, and it means if something catches fire easily, like if, if something burns easily, like a substance, for example, gasoline. Imagine if you're driving your car, right? And uh, you see your little your little kind of um, warning light on the dashboard there saying you're almost out of gas. Oh no, I'm low on fuel. I need to find a gas station. So you, you see a gas station, you pull off the road into the gas station, and then you go to fill in gas, and on the gas pump, it will probably say no smoking, right? <sighs> no smoking. Why? Because gas is a very flammable or inflammable you can say either word uh, fluid it's a gasoline is a very very flammable kind of a fluid right if you if there's a fire and you throw gas on the fire 
I mean, the fire is going to get a lot bigger, right? So don't throw gas on the fire. Don't smoke around uh, a gas pump because, you know, if a spark from your, your cigarette or something gets into the, the gas pump, I guess, you know, it could blow up the whole world. Could blow up the whole world. So save humanity today, my friends. Don't smoke around gas stations when you're you're filling in your car right so you know it'll the sign will probably say um flammable liquids or something like that or or inflammable liquids right like i said these mean exactly the same thing but when you look at these words you would think this one means that something catches fire easily like gas but this one means the opposite you would think that, right? This one means something else, like it's it's not flammable, like water, for example. You know, if you have a, you know, if you have some some gas and some water, the water you would think would be inflammable because it doesn't burn, whereas the gas would be highly flammable because it does burn. But that's a trick. It's just, I don't know who invented English. If you think English is a little bit crazy, then. Uh, smash like. I think it's crazy because this is, I mean, this is the way normal English works when, when there's a word and we have in that makes it the opposite meaning. For example, um, look at these words here, compatible and incompatible. These are opposites, right? And they, I mean, they're complete opposites. Like if you're in a relationship and you are compatible with your partner, uh, that's a great thing, right? That means you guys can you know, get along. You you just, you can work together well. You can live together, you know, in peace and harmony. But if you're incompatible with your partner, that means, that means you just, you, you, your relationship has problems, right? If you're, if you're incompatible with your partner, you're probably going to break up. Have you ever had a partner that's like incompatible? or compatible let me know all your relationship history right down there in the comments for the whole world to know i'm just kidding <laughs> but um it's funny that these are opposites right whereas with with this one they're the same you know anybody learning english like imagine if an alien came to earth and tried to figure out the english language figure out the patterns right they would assume that this is this is opposite of this this word but it's not you know uh let's look at another example famous and infamous okay famous and infamous these mean the same thing are you famous i guess i'm a little bit famous now got uh, a couple of subscribers right so sometimes i've been um uh, you know, walking around and people recognize me. That's happened a few times. That's happened in, uh, that happened in Myanmar. It happened in Thailand. It happened in a bunch of times here in Canada. Uh, so <laughs> that's kind of cool. I'm a little bit famous, not, not super famous, but you know, and, um, infamous, right? This is, means the same thing, right? If you have, uh, I don't know, um, let's say let's say someone is like a an infamous criminal an infamous criminal or something like that uh, that would mean they're famous right they're famous for their um whatever they whatever they're doing right um so yeah it's again it's exactly the same as flammable and inflammable they mean the same thing let's take a look at another one genius and ingenious genius and ingenious now, do you know what a, a genius is? Um, a genius is a really smart person. Are you a genius? Let me know down in the comments if you're a genius. Um, it just means, yeah, a person who's really, really bright. They have, they're, they're really, I mean, really smart. They've got good ideas. Maybe they're an inventor. Like people in history, like Albert Einstein, you know, those guys, they're, they're thought of as geniuses, right? And, um, you know, they have very ingenious ideas. So these words mean the same thing, right? If you have a, an ingenious idea, 
that means it's a great idea. You know, maybe you have some new invention, you know, or I don't know, you have a way to solve, let's say, poverty around the world. Wow, that's an ingenious idea, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's another example there where they look like they should be opposite meanings. You'd think this is a smart person and this would be a stupid person. Ingenious. But no, they, they actually both mean the same thing. So, um, guys, here's, a, here's an interesting one that you've probably heard people say. Okay, I could care less or I couldn't care less. Now, actually, this one is right and this one is wrong. They mean the same thing. Okay, um, people often say this when they mean this. They just don't know how to say it properly. And this has become so common that now this is probably even more common than this. I hear it all the time. I was just watching a YouTube video uh, yesterday and that person said this. I could care less. So what does this mean? Well, this means um, that you don't care, right? I could care less. You know, if you don't really don't care about something, like if I ask you, hey, um, you know, what what do you think about uh, the politics in your country? You know, which which leader do you think would be better for your country? You, if you don't care, you could just say, I could care less. I couldn't care less. It just means you you really don't care, right? And you could say either one of these. They're both very common. But like I said, this one is actually correct. Because if you think about it, okay, you if you could care less, that means, I mean, that means you, you, you actually care a little bit, right? So if I, if I, like, let's take that politics example. Let's say I ask you, what do you think about, you know, politics in your country? If you said, I could care less, that means you care this much and you actually could go further down, right? But if with this one, I couldn't care less, that means you already are like right at the bottom. You really don't care at all. That's why this one is correct. Because what you're trying to say is you don't care at all. I, I, could, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care any less than I care now, right? And um, that's why this one is wrong. But people use this one when they really mean this one. So they mean the same thing, right? I mean, you, you can choose whatever whatever one you want to use. But like I said, this one's wrong. So you should do you should use the right one. You should learn it the right way. It's I couldn't care less. I couldn't. Okay. Um, now here's um, here are two words that kind of have the same idea. Okay, so shameful and shameless. What's the difference? Shameful and shameless. It sounds like they should be opposites, right? Because this is full and this is less. Like, you know, for example, if a person is careful, that means that's a good thing, right? If a person is careless, that means they're they're kind of, um, I don't know, they make a lot of mistakes. They might break something, right? If... Uh, Imagine if I'm carrying my laptop, right? If I'm careful, I'm like trying to make sure I don't drop my laptop, right? Because it's expensive. Um, but if I'm careless, then I might like drink, be drinking some tea and I might put the tea down on my, on my computer and then maybe knock the tea over and it spills everywhere and fries my computer, right? Then I would be careless. So those careful and careless are opposites. But with these shameful and shameless, they're not opposites. Actually, they're kind of the same. So if someone does something shameful, um, you know, like let me give you an example. Uh, imagine if someone cheats on their partner. Right? Have you ever cheated on your? partner let me know be honest down in the comments let me know all your deep dark secrets right so I mean if let's say someone's cheated well then you could say that's a very shameful act what they did was shameful right they're a shameless person like let's say let's say the person who cheated doesn't even really care they just oh yeah I, I cheated big deal you know they just keep going on with their life you could say that person's shameless. 
It means they should have shame, but they don't. So it's like, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're a shameless person. So these kind of mean the same thing. We would use this one for, for, for acts like, like cheating. Let's say it's a shameful act and this one for the person. So the shameless person, he is shameless or she is shameless. Yeah. She did a shameful thing that was shameful. She is shameless. Do you see the difference? We'd use this one for, for a person, this one for an action. Um, yeah. So like I said, they kind of have the same meaning, right? Um, now let's, let's look at these three words here. Um, cause this is kind of a bit of a, a subtle difference here. Okay. So faithful, you know what faithful means, right? If you're faithful, that means you stay loyal. You know, like if you are, if you're married, right. And you stay faithful to your spouse, right? The word spouse means like your, your husband or wife, right? Um, so if you're faithful, that's a good thing, right? Now, what's the opposite of faithful? W what do you think is the opposite? Okay, well, I, a lot of people would probably think of this, unfaithful, right? We got our little prefix here to make it the opposite, right, of faithful. So if you're unfaithful, that means you probably, you're, you're going to cheat on your spouse, and we use that in English. We say, oh, he was unfaithful to his wife or she was unfaithful to her husband, right? But what about this word here, faithless? Okay, here we've got this word less, this pre, uh, sorry, not a prefix, a suffix, right? A prefix is at the beginning of the word here. Un is a prefix. Less is the part of the word at the end called a suffix. So what's the difference between faithless and unfaithful. What do you think? Well, there is kind of a difference in meaning, right? So, um, if you're faithless, that just means you don't have any, you don't have any faith. You don't have any confidence in let's, let's use the marriage example again, right? So you're married. If you're faithless in your spouse, that means you just don't have any confidence in your spouse. And that's not a good thing, right? In a relationship, every relationship, you need to have confidence in another person. All right. So if you, if you're faithless, um, it's a bit different than if you're unfaithful, right? You could probably be faithless and still be in a way, <laughs> if you could be loyal to your spouse, so you could be living with your husband or wife and you could just not have any faith in them. Like, I mean, maybe, uh, you don't think they're, Maybe you don't think they love you or they, they're, you don't think they're going to be faithful to you. Maybe they are faithful, but you just don't have any faith in their loyalty and commitment to you. Or maybe you don't have any faith in their ability to do stuff like just competence, all right? Like fixing the house or, or cleaning something or solving a problem, you know, spending the money in the right way, right? So if you don't have any confidence in your in your spouse, then you, you, you could be, you'd be faithless. That doesn't mean you cheated, right? If you're unfaithful, that means you cheated. So there's kind of a difference. Do you understand the difference? So that's why I just, I wanted to give you these three words just so we kind of, kind of work through it a little bit. Sometimes there's, sometimes words are, are like direct opposites of each other. Sometimes they're kind of similar. Um, sometimes they're exactly the same, like flammable and inflammable are exactly the same, right? Whereas these words, unfaithful and faithless, they can kind of be related, but they're kind of a bit different, right? And so that's why I wanted to, um, to, uh, to talk about that. Well, guys, this is it. It's the end of the lesson already. Isn't that bad news? You were just settling in for a, a long afternoon with Uncle Mark here at Mad English TV. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me always. Um, so I have some homework for you. Tell me about something that you couldn't care less about. What is something in your life that you've experienced or you know, maybe it's something in your country or something in your life that, uh, that happened? You, you just couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about that. So let me know down there in the comments. I'm interested to hear what you guys <laughs> come up with, um, what you care about and what you don't care about, you know.
Sometimes it's, it's interesting to learn about what people don't care about. Like it's very often in relationships or friendships, you know, you kind of find common ground and you find out what that person cares about. But then sometimes it's good to know actually what a person really doesn't care about at all. You know, like I said, some people don't care about politics or sports. Actually, a lot of people don't care about sports at all. I've met people who say, I don't know anything about sports. I could, I couldn't care less. Or sometimes they make the mistake and they say, I could care less. I could care less about sports. But like I said, those mean the same thing. So that was a very interesting question. Thank you, Steve from Ukraine. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd make a lesson about that and uh, just address that issue. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if you have any other examples down there in the comments about words that, that sound like they should mean the opposite, but actually they mean the same thing. Well, guys, uh, take care. Hope you have a great day wherever you are. Stay safe. Stay happy. I love you so much. As always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV.